Apple accessories are pretty expensive, and I've got a 3D printer, so I decided to print a load of Apple accessories that are actually really useful. Now I wanted to make this interesting for myself. I wanted to set some conditions, and those conditions are one, it had to be freely available to print from websites like Printables or Thingiverse. Two, each print had to not require any additional parts like bearings, nuts, bolts or screws. And finally, it had to be useful. I didn't want to print off something silly that you could easily use an object to achieve the same result. So what am I working with? This is the Anker M5C printer. It was kindly sent to me by AnkerMake to test out and make some content with it. This isn't a review of the M5C, but I will say that as I am a complete novice with absolutely zero experience with any 3D printing software, hardware, or printing for that matter, I have found it to be incredibly easy to use with only a handful of issues which were easily resolved and mostly down to user error. The first thing I ever printed for one of my Apple products was this HomePod mini stand. I really liked the look of this one from Baolo, but at the time when I first discovered it, I couldn't justify the price they were asking. So when I saw that printables user QSE created one that was very similar, I had to print it out and see how it looks. I personally like the look of it, it elevates the HomePod off the ground, but yes, I know it's not as good quality or visually appealing as the Baolo stand, but it gives me a real life indication of what it could look like if I were to go and purchase one. And after seeing this in person, I may be swayed into buying one. This is purely a cosmetic upgrade and from my own listening experience, it doesn't affect sound quality at all, but it elevates the product literally and visually. Organization is a huge thing for many people and I believe anyone who travels with a MacBook Pro could use something like this next item. This is a charging cable organizer from Conrad June. It's easy to use as it slots over your 95 watt charger. It includes a spool for you to wrap your MagSafe cable around and a really handy slot for the MagSafe connector to sit in. It's useful, simple, and barely takes up any space in your bag while also keeping everything clean and organized. Honestly, it's a great option for anyone with this size charger and I'm really hoping Conrad produces one for the smaller 65 watt charger and my personal one, the larger 140 watt charger, as this is a bit loose, but you can easily sort that with some VHB tape. Printing it was easy, you simply download the file, add some supports and click print. I used PLA plus filament and I've not had any issues in terms of it warping due to the heat given off when charging or it breaking from being thrown about in my bag. It printed in 3 hours and 45 minutes using the normal preset on the M5C with layer ironing and support. You could easily cut this down to 2 hours and 50 minutes if you use the fast setting, but I think for almost 4 hours of printing it's absolutely worth the extra time and print quality. The MacBook Pro has a fairly decent webcam, but within macOS there is an amazing feature called Continuity Camera. This allows you to use your iPhone as a webcam. Why would you want to do this? Well, the quality is far superior to the inbuilt webcam, and with some Apple magic, you can share your workspace in front of you without even tilting the camera down. But to get the most out of this feature, you need to buy a mount to hook your iPhone over your screen. The issue with this is you have one product that has one purpose and will be used only a handful of times. So one person has decided to reinvent this mount. Yi Jia Ji, who I'm hoping I pronounced their name correctly, took the idea of a continuity camera mount and created an adaptable one which doubles up as a phone stand to sit on your desk. It truly shows how amazing 3D printing is when this entire project with a rotating hinge is all printed in one piece in less than an hour on the normal speed setting. It's sturdy and it fits a variety of modern MacBooks and the current models of iMacs. And best of all, this one works without the need to use a MagSafe cable and you can even use it with an iPhone case. What more could you want? Obviously, there are a lot more simpler versions available, but in terms of usefulness and uniqueness, this one takes the win. MacBook stands come in all shapes, sizes, and more importantly, prices. And when it comes to something stylish, it's usually in the upper bracket of pricing, which can deter a lot of people. Printables user KTH0 decided to take the Robin Hood approach and created a unique floating stand based off of a design from a brand named Johan which I have to say, the original looks absolutely gorgeous. Handcrafted wooden furniture is expensive, but this one costs less than 100 grams of filament if you choose to print it without the two TPU inserts and base files. 
Despite the size of the stand, it only took the Anker M5C on normal settings 3 hours and 45 minutes to print. How does it work? Well, there are two ways you can use this. The first is in a 45 degree, almost closed position, which would be great for those who want to prop up their MacBook next to their monitor, or this awesome floating MacBook position. It's a mesmerizing piece, and I do wonder how long it will last. I printed this in PLA+, so I can't hazard a guess right now, but I will say, despite its unique look and approach to a MacBook stand, I won't be using this full time. I'm gonna stick to my Grove made one for now, because I love that thing, and it's really good quality. When my girlfriend stays over, she needs a place to charge her Apple Watch. But I hate having my spare Apple Watch charger lying about the place. So what did I do? I printed this Apple Watch charging stand from Stephanie Rattelit. I hope I said that right again. It takes your Apple Watch charger and slots it into this hole and makes for a really clean looking charging stand for your Apple Watch. I actually really like this one. If I didn't already have a bedside charging stand, I'd 100% use this myself. I was really impressed with the simple design, so it got me thinking, what about an iPhone charger? Luckily there was this unique design from a guy named Thomas on printables. It takes your MagSafe puck and slots it into this cone-shaped design, and it screws into your shelf or desk with the second piece, a printable screw. It takes up barely any space at all and can clamp to any surface with a diameter of 12 to 20 millimeters wide. I really like this design as this is how I'd personally want to mount it to my desk shelf. But unfortunately, due to a design choice from Grove Made, it's just a little too short to clamp securely enough. I first printed this with PLA+, which printed very well and looked good, but unfortunately, it cracked when I began to clamp it down to a surface. I then picked up some PETG CF, as I had heard a lot of good things about this filament. After three long failed prints, I almost gave up, but stubbornness kicked in, and after a little bit of research and a few cries for help on Reddit, I was able to get this printed, and the quality is absolutely amazing. PETG CF filament prints really well with a nice smooth edge finish. I opted to keep the PLA screw which I printed before as it worked just fine with a PETG print, and I decided to mount it vertically to my bedside table, which I think works really well for this design, even if it wasn't intended to be mounted this way. The Apple TV is fantastic and very underrated, and to celebrate my most popular video on the product, I decided to print an accessory for it. And what might that be? Well how about a cradle to mount it to the back of my TV? This little box from Bart P fits the Apple TV perfectly. There's only two issues. I stupidly printed off one for a 75x75 75 75 vase mount, whereas my TV uses a 200x200 200 200 mount, and secondly, it mounts the Apple TV upside down. But as this will be hidden behind the TV, I can live with that second issue. But if I were to mount it in its current form, it would be off balance and probably come loose. So what did I do? I grabbed my trusty Hoto drill and got to work. One hole drilled approximately in the center top third later and we have a perfect mount for my Apple TV. The bonus of having this mounted to the back of my TV is that it also cleans up my TV unit so there's less cables on show. And finally, I printed this awesome little phone mount for your DualShock controller. So for those of you who like to game on their phone, this mount allows you to do that with a PS5 controller. It clips on easy and the viewing angle is adjustable with these two screws. I won't deny that I've snapped a few from over tightening, but as they only take 15 minutes each to print with PETG, it's not a huge loss if they do, I can just print off another one. You will however have to have some knowledge of Fusion 360 as they come with step files that allow you to modify the phone clamp size of your phone. I'm not that familiar with Fusion 360 myself, but one quick YouTube search on how to adjust parameters and I had a mount to fit the 15 Pro Max. Alternatively, there are a few remixes dotted about of this model where people have adjusted them for their specific phone sizes, and even a few use them with mobile phone cases as well. This is a really cool design and much cheaper in time, filament and energy when you compare it to those sold online. Is this better than one you can buy online? Most likely not. But if you want to give mobile gaming a try with a controller, this is the design for you. I really like this and I'm actually really impressed with how well it works. So what has this experiment taught me? Well, for starters, there's a design for almost anything out there. And with a bit of research, patience and many, many trial prints, you can eventually get some fantastic results with some extremely unique and handy designs. 3D printing is also incredibly messy, but a whole lot of fun. 
I want to thank AnchorMake once more for sending me the M5C and allowing me to get involved in this whole world of 3D printing. It might be the perfect 3D printer for beginners. The software is easy to use and I get great printing results. So if you want to pick one up, there's a link to it in the description. Also, don't forget to check out every creation I've made today and to show some love to the hardworking people who put in the time into designing all of them. They've done an amazing job and the fact that they've given them all away for free is really special and deserving of praise.